Day number nine, ride in the West Malaysian Peninsula. Today, our penultimate ride day towards Singapore. We're almost there. Legs are tired, but we're feeling happy. We have exactly 107K to ride today from Batu Pahat to Kulai. And in today's episode, I'm gonna run through my bikepacking survival kit. Someone's just commented on YouTube. Apparently right now, Malaysia is experiencing one of their worst heat waves ever. And we're riding all the way through it at exactly the right time. Oh, that was getting a bit chilly. Survival kit. The following things all stay in my bar bag, which is on the front of my bike, easy to access when you're stopped, and well, I'll just show you. First up on the list, this is an obvious one, a multi-tool, but it has to have a chain breaker on it. This one is a Park MT40, and they're fairly pricey, but well made. All of the Allen keys are really handy. It has some Torx drivers as well, and flathead screwdriver. The nice thing about having a chain breaker is that you can reattach your chain if you do snap it. Without this, you could be stranded and have to like push your bike like a children's balance bike. Not what I want to do while cycling across Malaysia. Next up, proper toothbrush. I also have a Peppa Pig toothbrush. I carry two. I don't know why I stole this one from a hotel room. Proper toothpaste, the same one I use at home. Just makes you feel a little bit fresher when you're riding. Even if you're doing like an ultra race, I know loads of them take proper toothbrush with them because it just makes a big difference to how you feel. It is for morale. Next up is tire levers. Uh, even if you're very strong and you know you can get your tires off the rim without them, I always carry these because your idiot friends that come with you might not have the same tire and wheel combination and they'll be stuffed. I have these. Do you have tire levers with you? Yes, I have everything except the tire. Chain lube, uh, it's inside a little plastic bag so it doesn't leak. Ziploc bags are always really handy. Uh, I always take a proper bottle of chain lube so you've got loads of chances to reapply it. Reapplying this regularly does make your bike quieter and it's gonna last longer and just take a whole one instead of a tiny little one which lasts one application and then it's gone. This one is Silka Synergetic which I actually bought before we got sponsored by Silka. So, very good chain lube. Next up is <laughs> A really heavy, oh a really heavy adjustable spanner. What? You'd be surprised how often you need a spanner. And I'll just take a whole, I don't care. I don't care how much my bike weighs. Once it's heavy, it's heavy. So always take an adjustable spanner. Also doubles up as a pedal spanner. These guys have been borrowing this off me for their little jobs, yet they moan about not having one. Pepper Pig toothbrush. Next up, I carry a small Ziploc bag full of cable ties, which I've used quite a lot of on Lawrence's bike and bolts. So these are bolts that go into the tail fin rack and bottle cage size bolts. So I think they're like M5s or something. They're very common size, uh, five millimeter bolt and you use them for lots of different things on the bike. I like to carry spares just in case something works its way loose and then you lose them. Uh, you can put these in your cleats as well. Just they're very useful to have. Patch kit. This is a park tool patch kit with non pre-glued patches. This is the one with the little real life super glue so you glue them yourself that's the important bit the pre-glued ones are terrible and they come off so even if you're running tubeless spare any tubes in your bag take one of these patch kits i have uh i have two of these almost always i then have a little tool roll old school atticus one inside here i have tire boots again with a little tube of super glue this one uh comes from restrap and you can buy this and essentially patch your tire if your tire gets a gash in. So it works better than a gel wrapper. This is, they stick on really well and they're super thick. So you stick them on the inside of the tire if you get a big gash in it. I then have a few tubeless plugs in here, spare brake pads, and my favorite thing on this list, my Leatherman multi-tool. So Leatherman multi-tools are non-cycling specific multi-tools, a bit like a Swiss army knife, but they're all built around a pair of pliers. There's lots and lots of things that you need pliers for on a bike. Like if you get valves stuck, also cables, you can pull cables through and loads of other applications. This comes in so, so useful. Folds down very small. It also has 
a big ass knife on it. Uh, do check if the country that you're going to allows locking blades. It's not massive and long, but it is locking. So just bear that in mind if you're gonna travel with it. This one in particular is called the Leatherman Wave Plus. And it also has on it little screwdriver, bottle opener, Torx thing, Allen keys, and it, it's pretty comprehensive for the size. Uh, fairly weighty because it's quality. Other incredibly important things. A lip salve, which is UV protective. So not only can you use this on your lips, when you go to different countries and the climate's different, whether I go into the cold or the hot, I seem to get chapped lips. So you can put this on and it protects from the sun. But also, if you have any patches of sunburn, which are like you've missed with the sun cream, you can just go and cover them up while you're riding. I stick this in the side of my bar bag so I can always get access to it. One of the last and most important things on the list, a tiny bottle of tahine. Last up, an honorable mention to the Nivea sun cream, which is a roll-on, because when you're riding along, you can actually put it on as you, as you go. It's really good, and it lasts about the length of most bike backer trips. <laughs> so give that one a go. It's super strong and it's for kids, so it doesn't wash off. some lovely guys out on bikes as well. They've ridden here from Vietnam. So all the way through Thailand. I'm jealous. We've only got a day left. fact about Pringles, a test which people can try out and prove at home, which is the flavor on a Pringle is only on one side. <laughs> so if you lick one side, you'll taste it. If you lick the other side, nothing. These, however, aren't Pringles. They are Mr. Potato Crisps with a picture of Super Mario wearing a different hat. These don't have flavor on either side. They're shit. Because you bought the plain ones. They haven't got salt. Another fact about Pringles, they don't, they don't contain enough potato to be called a potato crisp. Really? Yeah. It's similar to the whole, you know, Jaffa cakes aren't a biscuit or a cake. Are they a biscuit or a cake? They don't know what to class them as because there's not enough potato in them to call them a potato crisp, even though it says potato crisps on them. I think that's right, anyway. In America, a pizza is classed as a vegetable because it has tomato on it. For, for primary schools and like schools. It's like, pizza, yeah, vegetable tick. How crazy is that? Everything I want. Oh, you've seen Stonehenge. I've seen it, I've been up close. You're not allowed to touch it though. Uh, what is this? It's for Muslim man. Yeah. Um, after fasting. This man here has been to London. His son is studying in Southampton. So he spent some time he's there. He's working here. Lah. He works here? Yeah. I got my friend, his name is... Uh, Andrew Francis. Oh, that's my name. name. It's your name is? Francis. Francis, is it? Andrew. My dad is yeah. called Andrew. Oh, no, 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 thank you. you. Well, we are, we are absolutely fine, but thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much. What a lovely man. I tell you, the people here, so kind, so welcoming. They're always up for a chat. He said England was very cold when he went. He's right. Lawrence, did you enjoy the gravel? I love the gravel. What I 